What's up all you legendary pirates out there? I'm Dizdizdin and it's here. It's here. I've read it. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's great. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's chapter 1000 of One Piece. <sighs> Titled Straw Hat Luffy. Fantastic. I love that title. I love that title so much because it's just it's so simple and that's kind of what this chapter is it's simple no big revelations small ones at that little moments you can kind of see coming or you know interesting nice little moments nothing overly big but at the same time it's just a celebration of luffy just just really hyping up Luffy. That's what this chapter is. It's the hype moment for our boy, Monkey D. Luffy, your king and mine. Let's, let, let's talk about this a little bit, shall we? Now that cover page, that cover spread, the other half of that, beautiful, Mwah. chef kiss. Lovely art. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. I'm always happy to see Jimbei included in things. Now, something that I, I, just a little aside that I'll get into is that in comparison with the 100th chapter and the 1000th chapter, you know, the two cover spreads, it's very fascinating to note the real big change in Oda's art. Whereas before, Oda's art seemed... I guess you could kind of say more rounded, you know, more cartoony, more, like, it, it, it very much felt like Luffy was a man made of rubber. Like, if, if that makes any sense. You know, he, he had this slim build, he wasn't overly muscular, and he very much seemed like, oh, stretch here, stretch there, stretch everywhere. With this, you know, you can see the increase in Oda's detail, the you know, various aspects, there's more shading, there's, like, th there's more, I guess, s uh, uh, depth behind it, I guess you could say, in terms of Oda's drawing style and colors, because... You know, he's improved. You know, that's the thing. It's been years since that 100th chapter. And to see these two images side by side, you really get a feel for the changes in Oda's art style. But enough about that. I've gushed enough over his style. Let's get into the actual chapter. So I love the opening because you see Sicilian and the musketeers of Inuarashi who have been doing their damnedest to keep the stairwell clear. Because at that point, that was the only thing they could do. Take out any of Kaido's men who would try to get up to impede the Nine Red Scabbards, to make sure that the way is clear for any allies who want to get in and join in the battle. And honestly, with Sicilian... It's it's so sad because that's all he could really do. And you when Luffy passes him and you know, notes about how they protected Ryzo for everything that they've done, you know, he makes sure to let them know that they played a part. Though they can't be there for the final battle, they still played a part in all of this. And we then cut over to that moment with Marco and uh, king and queen with him throwing Zoro like right up to the top of the skull dome and you see him holding the two of them back with his phoenix wing and something of note is the fact that queen queen has a cybernetic neck like yo how much of queen is robot like of Apparently, he is very much like Frankie. Like, there's just a weirdly large amount of him that is cyborg. And I would have never guessed, like, Oda's oh, really having fun with this, because it's just like, oh, he has a robotic neck, apparently. But I was kind of clued into that, because he had, like, a Gatling gun in his mouth, so it's just like, okay, okay. But Zoro is thrown up to join in on the fight. We then cut back to Momonosuke and Yamato. And, you know, he's telling Momo it's just like the will of D that, sh that he has um, Momo's father's journal. Oh, but, you know, 
Yamato continues to just be overjoyed at the fact that he gets to meet Momonosuke. And just the sheer happenstance of everything that has happened. And Yamato goes on about Odin's journal and how it really did tie into everything that is happening now. We get shots of Law and Kid and Killer all making their way up to the top of the Skull Dome. We then get a flashback to when Yamato was talking to Ace, partying it up. And apparently, you know, that moment back when the three of them were kids, Sabo, Ace, and Luffy, when Luffy said something, but it was inaudible. We never heard what Luffy said. And once, and, you know, there was a moment like that with Roger, too, where you didn't hear what he said. You know, he said something, and it, my assumption was always that it was just like, oh, he's going to be king of the pirates, I'm going to be king of the pirates. But the way Oda keeps just blanking that out, there has to be something deeper, because I thought it was more of a, oh, you already know, he says it all the time. But then again, if he says it all the time, why not include it there's something deeper to what luffy said and ace is reminiscing about it because apparently ace was actually very shaken by what luffy said and i never would have guessed that honestly and you know during a drunken stupor he tells it to yamato and he's just like forget i told you any of that don't laugh you know yeah me and Sabo well, aren't cool with that. We want to defend our little brother's dreams. You know, we laughed, but that's okay because we're his brothers. Nobody else can laugh. We believe in him. He can make it happen. And Yamato just completely kind of loses it at that moment, pulling out Odin's journal and being like, I can never laugh at him because those words were similar to what you know, Roger said, you know, the words spoken by Roger, but ultimately, you know, Yamato only says, oh, it was spoken of by a great man, so Ace never even knew that his father had said the same thing, you know, Yamato doesn't let on who said it, and that's what kills me, you know, it's just like, oh, you were so close to knowing more about your father, but then again, Ace probably wouldn't have even cared if he did know. He would have just brushed it off and saying that, ah, no, Luffy will be the one to really make it happen. But ultimately, you know, Yamato says the guy's dead, and that doesn't fill Ace with a lot of uh, hope, I guess you could say. <laughs> because it's just like, oh, it's the words of a dead man. That's fantastic. We also kind of find out that it was Yamato who had crafted the Vivre card for Ace, the one that he gave to Luffy, which is very fascinating it's just like oh okay and that also explains why he knew that ace was dead and he explains it's just like one day ace's vivery card just up and disappeared you know it was supposed to be a way of us meeting again and it never happened you know it was supposed to be a way that if yamato ever was able to leave he would be able to search out ace but the Vivre card disappeared. So while Luffy was going through all of that stuff at Marineford, Yamato was, you know, slowly seeing Ace's card just burn away and disappear. It's just like, what happened? It couldn't be. And then next thing you know, Yamato got news that, sure enough, Ace had died. But I also learned something else. That, you know, Ace was Roger's son of all things. That... You know, probably never would have even guessed that Luffy had made a name of himself. And then next thing you know, Luffy was bringing Momonosuke to Wano. And it was just like, there has to be something really meaningful about this. There was this prophecy that in 20 years into the future, a powerful generation of pirates would storm into the New World. And one of them would be the one to strike down Kaido. Now, if, whether or not this was a true prophecy or just a great assumption because of 
of the plan to just if we get taken down we'll send the scabbers 20 years into the future is very much hard to tell you know it, i'm really wondering is this a prophecy prophecy or just good guessing it's really hard to say but then we get this epic confrontation as luffy has finally managed to arrive the hero is always late to the party ladies and gentlemen as we see you know kid killer Zoro, Tlaw, they've all arrived and they've all been just having this standoff with Kaido and Big Mom. And, you know, kids just like, ah, okay, ye another one's here. You step back and just watch me take these guys out. So, of course, kid with his endless bravado. But, you know, Kaido and Big Mom are just like, oh, okay, so he's finally here. We've got all these kids with their young heads that would look great on a pike. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Big Red Queen is always ready to kill. And as, Kai as Luffy goes walking towards them, you know, Kaido shares a conversation with Big Mom. And it's just like, D did you hear... Do you know what this little shit said to my face? And Big Mom's like, yeah, yeah he does that. <laughs> it's just, it's like two adults talking about, like, some bad child. And, you know, they talk about how the fact that he talks a big game. Uh, and she talks about how she he destroyed her castle. And she wants an apology. And, you know, Luffy doesn't even acknowledge them. He walks right on past them in this really epic moment. I love that, like, uh, over shirt on Luffy, the jacket on Luffy. It looks so badass. And he just walks casually right over to Kinemon with Kaido. You know, see, that's the thing, too, because Kaido and Big Mom's eyes are on Luffy. Two of the strongest beings in the world. Their eyes are square on Luffy. And in this moment, Luffy, they're a passing thought. You know, they're an afterthought, if nothing else. Because Luffy writes, walks right to Kinemon. And it, he apologizes for taking so long. And then he looks over and he sees all of the other nine red scabbards. All down on the ground, taken out bleeding and you know Kinemon ah oh, poor Kinemon he's crying he's bleeding he's heartbroken they couldn't do anything and Kinemon feels like all he's left with is shame and then he begs Luffy to save Wano to put the the future of Wano on his back and Luffy of course he says yes of course I will you're my friend this is my friend's country and as Kaido gets ready to strike at Luffy, you know, just be like, hey, don't you fucking ignore me, you little shit. Luffy calls over to Law, tells him, hey, could you just send them further down below so that they can get to Chopper for some medical treatment, something. You know, then Kaido strikes down Luffy suddenly in the air like it's nothing and and as he just goes in for a gear three attack you know gear three hockeyed up it's just like but you've done this before and kind of shrugged it off but luffy is empowered by the will of his friends and all the training he did back at the udon prison he thinks back to you know inurashi and nakamamushi you know keeping raizo safe you know, Nekomumushi just being like, we would never sell out our comrade to the enemy. You know, Momonosuke and his sadness. Kinemon and how, how they missed out on 20 years. Um, Yasue and how he was killed. Hiogoro and his, you know, sadness. The death of their leader. All of this. And he just takes over. All of that anger, that rage, that sorrow, and he slams into Kaido with an attack called Gear 3rd Gum Gum Red Rock, which is a type of bird, I believe. And Kaido's head goes slamming into the ground, engulfed in flames, and Big's mom's just like, wait, that? how did you... 
how could you let him hit you like that? Like, with such a strong attack. And Kaido, Kaido looks like he just got knocked for a loof. And Luffy responds to Kaido's previous question about what he said before. It's just like, I'm Monkey D. Luffy, and I'm the man who will surpass you to be king of the pirates. Mic drop! He's <laughs> like a friggin' G. Like a goddamn G. And it's just like, yo, Luffy, that was boss as shit. That was boss as shit. Now, the only... It's great to see this. You know, it really just shows the progression that Luffy had. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, eh. It wasn't like a big revelation. It's just... Luffy can actually do some damage to Kaido now. Now, whether or not, you know, Lu Kaido actually trying will be able to, you know, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Luffy and do some damage, it it's hard to say. You know, it could be a wash. It could not. You know, with a combined effort with ev all of the five of the people here, maybe, maybe they might have a bit of a chance. But again, it's really hard to say. You know, because with everything that's going on, are we really going to take down Kaido and Big Mom here? Is that really going to be the end of them? I, I can't see it. I can't imagine it. Unless more happens in the next 50 or so chapters, I don't know. I don't know. I can't see it happening. But tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think Luffy and the rest have got this? Do you think they'll be able to take these guys down? And what do you think it is that Luffy said all that time ago? What's the connection between him and Gold Roger? The words that they spoke? And what is the relevance of all of that? Is it really just, I'm going to be King of the Pirates? Or is it something deeper? Why would Roger say that if he was pretty much already the Pirate King? Who knows? Tell me your thoughts and theories in the comments section below. Subscribe and hit the bell icon. That way you never miss out on another One Piece chapter review. And like and dislike this video depending on how you felt about it. Did you enjoy chapter 1000? Was it everything you hoped it would be? For the most part... It wasn't really for me, but we were already in such a great series of chapters that it was just like, it's one of many, which was how it felt about 100. It was just like, it was one of many great chapters. It just really just felt you, filled you with this sense of pride for everything that was going on. So, if nothing else, there's that. But again, comment, like, subscribe, bell, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.